All right, guys, I genuinely tried. I don't know what you want from me. What's up, guys? Kudokun here. Now, I am about a month or so behind on Nintendo news. Uh, everybody put their best surprised face on. And I decided that what I would do is I would just gather up all the news that came out of the latest Nintendo Direct and the Pokemon Direct, scrunch them together, and just give all of my thoughts on them in one video. So here we go. First on our list is Super Mario Maker 2. Looks fine. I'm not really a huge fan of Super Mario Maker. Uh, I mean, I totally get it if that's your thing, but honestly, if I'm gonna play a game like that, I'm just gonna jump straight into Little Big Planet, okay? Little Big Planet is my jam. I think that engine works much better when you have an actual game engine that pushes physics, because I think people can do interesting things with physics, and Super Mario just doesn't have any physics, so. Uh, honestly, if that's your thing, that's cool. Uh, it does look very nice. It looks like a huge improvement on Super Mario Maker 1. More Sieve gaming videos, all great, but uh, probably not for me. There's a new Marvel Ultimate Alliance game. Honestly, the only thing I know about Marvel Ultimate Alliance is that there used to be like 50,000 copies in bargain bins at pretty much every single store I ever went to. So, I mean, it does look genuinely pretty nice. I don't really know... Uh, why I haven't really heard much about the series before. It looks okay. It's a beat-em-up with Marvel characters. Um, it's got Guardians of the Galaxy in it. Maybe I'll check it out. Not likely, but uh, if you're into that kind of thing, it does look pretty good. We got some information on the new Smash update. They were pretty tight-lipped on any actual content, though. Um, we already knew about Joker. Uh, having him come is going to be pretty cool. I really wish we would have gotten some information on what his stage is going to look like. Because um, I'm really curious to see what stage they're actually going to go with. Um, I'm hoping that they're going to go with something based around the jail itself. Because I think that would be really cool. But who knows. It's probably going to be a castle stage. Which I'm not I'm not super looking forward to. Because we've already got castle stages. But they're probably going to do that just because it's, uh, you know, it's the very first world that you go to. So whatever. Um, obviously Smash Update looks pretty good. But uh, I do wish we'd actually gotten some content out of it. There's some new Captain Toad treasure tracker stuff. Um, Captain Toad was pretty cute on the Wii U. I really didn't mind it at all. Um, but, I man, I, I didn't even check it out on the Switch, to be completely honest. Uh, it looks... I uh, mean, I, I know I keep saying it, but it looks fine. Um, it really doesn't look that horrible or anything, but... Uh, skip. It's not really for me. Information on our new Bloodstained game, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Um, it looks pretty good, honestly. Uh, I've never really been huge into Castlevania, or Metroidvania, I guess is the new genre name for it. Um, on, I did really get into the other Bloodstained game that came out, though, the 8-bit one, but that was mainly for the charm of it looking like an old NES game. I thought that was really awesome. I think when you take that charm away and you make it look like a serious game, it loses a little bit of its appeal, but I do like some of the new ideas. I like the idea of flipping the castle upside down. Uh, you know, it's kind of like Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Let's not, let's not dance around the issue. It's kind of like Castlevania Symphony of the Night, but the fact that you can do it at will is pretty cool. And uh, I, hopefully there are some new things that come out about it that make me more excited, but right now it's probably gonna be a pass from me. Dragon Quest Builders 2. Uh, more Dragon Quest, more, more Dragon Quest Minecraft. Fantastic. Uh, I actually laughed out loud when I was watching this direct because when they showed it, the, one of the things that Dragon Quest Builders had over Minecraft is it had a really nice, like, third-person view and the, um, the graphics looked really unique. And then they showed that, oh man, in Dragon Quest Builders 2, you can play it in first-person mode, which... As if it didn't look enough like Minecraft already. How about another dragon? <laughs> well, we just play another dragons. Ah, uh, it's so good. Uh, honestly, it doesn't look that bad. If I were going to get into a Minecraft style game, I think Dragon Quest Builders is where I'd go. But this is probably gonna be another pass for me. I haven't played the first one. Maybe I'll check it out at some point. But who knows? Although in Dragon Quest related news, they finally released a date for Dragon Quest Eleven. Or not necessarily a date, but a general time frame, which this is what I've been waiting for. I've been waiting for Dragon Quest XI to come out on the Switch before I actually got into it. 
Uh, looks like I made the right decision because they are actually releasing a bunch of new content for it where you can actually uh, make the other characters sort of your main character for smaller prologue stories. It sounds, sounds awesome. I'm really looking forward to it, although I do think that, uh, I do think that Dragon Quest team is sort of on their high horse a little bit with this game. Uh, they just kept saying things like, there are RPGs, and then there's Dragon Quest. Like, let's not, come, come on guys, let's not, let's not beat ourselves off too hard here, okay? Dragon Quest is a pretty typical JRPG. I'm not saying it's bad or anything, I love Dragon Quest, but, I mean, let's not sit here and pretend like there's some huge revolutionary thing that you can only get in the Dragon Quest series. Like, sure, it's a pioneer, but, I mean, the differences between Dragon Quest Eleven and Dragon Quest V... I also love how they tried to sell the story. It was like, never before seen story. It's super original, guys. We promise, okay? A baby gets captured at birth. Souls. You got me, Dragon Quest. Let's, let's do this. I've never heard that story before in my life. Turns out he's the chosen warrior. And when he grows up and becomes a super hot teenager, he discovers his destiny. Oh my god. Dragon Quest. Does your creativity know no bounds? I am still looking forward to it, but come on guys. A notch down, just a tad bit. Dragon Quest VIII was a fantastic game, okay? You guys don't you guys don't have to ride that wave forever. Disney Tsum Tsum Festival. Okay, so it's it's Mario Party. With Disney plushies? Alright. They are making Mario Party with hot dog versions of all of the Disney characters. Now the thing is, I really don't know anything about Tsum Tsum. I've seen it one time at a round one, so I have a general idea of what it's supposed to be. But, alright, I guess we can make a video game out of anything. Let's go! Starlink Battle for Atlas is getting stuff. They are really trying to keep that alive. <laughs> I cannot believe they are pushing out content for Starlink Battle for Atlas. That's more cute than anything else, really. I feel pretty bad for them. It's like Starlink Battle for Atlas. This Starlink Battle for Atlas? I haven't even opened it. I've never played this game in my life. The only reason I even have this is because GameStop was practically throwing these things away during one of their Pro Day sales. And the best part about it is, the whole Star Fox thing was supposed to just be like a small tiny selling point to get some of these Starlink Battle for Atlas things out there. Supposed to be like, oh, well, if you get it on the Nintendo Switch, we'll just give you special Fox the Cloud. You know, like him, right? Reflectors, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now they're releasing an entire content pack that is literally just around Star Fox. So what are they going to do for the other platforms? Is this going to be a Switch-only thing? Because I have a feeling PS4 owners aren't going to be super happy when they hear about that. Call it a hunch. I think that's a little shady, but whatever, I guess. You're into Starlink. There's more Starlink coming. All right. Now, here's some real news. Rune Factory 4 Special. At first, I was really disappointed when I heard this because Rune Factory 4 is one of my favorite, like, under-the-radar under DS series. Love love me some Rune Factory. I think it's great. I think it's an amazing idea to have a version of Harvest Moon where you're also playing an RPG and fighting monsters and you can actually use the caves that you hunt monsters in to farm resources. I think that's a fantastic idea. I love the Rune Factory series but there was an announcement after Rune Factory 4 came out that the series would be ending so I was really upset about that for a while and when they were releasing information on this game, I saw it and I was like, 
That says RP. Oh my god, Rune Factory's coming back. And then I was like, oh no. Oh no, it's just a re-release of 4. Alright. I'll buy it, Nintendo. Got my hopes up for nothing. And then Rune Factory 5! Yes! Rune Factory 5 is coming and it's going to be on the Switch. Oh gosh, I'm so excited. You guys have no idea, alright? I am containing myself right now. I am so excited for Rune Factory 5. I know I'm the only person in America who's actually going to buy it and play it and enjoy it, but... I mean, at least one person's going to buy it and play it and enjoy it. This guy. They announced this game called Oninaki. It looks fantastic. I actually kind of thought uh, they were releasing information on like a um, like a re-release of something, but no, Oninaki looks like it's gonna be like an original thing. Uh, the art style looks great. Uh, the gameplay looks like it could be a lot of fun. Honestly, Oninaki's on my list. It's probably one of the things I'm most excited for uh, in this Nintendo Direct. Aside from Room Factory Five, yes. Oh. Gosh, I'm sorry. Oninaki does look pretty good, though. Yoshi Crafted Worlds. Man, I... You know, I was so into the Yoshi game uh, back on the Super Nintendo. Oh, man, Yoshi's Island? Loved Yoshi's Island. I played through it multiple times. But then... I mean, they released, like, another one. Like, Yoshi's Island 2. And I wasn't that into it. And now, like, they keep trying to push this Yoshi's Crafted World thing. Man, I'm I'm not into it, guys. I'm sorry. Maybe it's just I'm older and a bit more cynical. Uh, maybe it's just that I've lost touch with my inner child. But, man, I, I can't get into Yoshi's Crafted World, guys. I'm sorry. It If you're into that kind of thing, go for it. But not for me. We got more information on Fire Emblem Three Houses. I actually knew a lot of this because uh, of the Fire Emblem community and I. We we talk about lots of stuff, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be real with you guys. Uh, I am really hyped for this game. I think just based on what I've seen, I think this has the potential to be the best Fire Emblem game that's been released so far. My personal favorite so far has been Fire Emblem Awakening, um, and then. Conquest and Birthright came out. I wasn't super into it. Uh, the story was hella dumb. There were only a few characters that I really liked. I loved the new battle system. I thought everything there worked really well, but overall, just not a huge fan. And then uh, they released um, Echoes of something or other. What was it called? Holy cow. Fire Emblem Echoes something, something, something. I don't remember. Look, uh, the Echoes game was actually really nice. It was really refreshing. Uh, you could tell that it was based off of a pretty old game because some of it was a bit tired. Um, the grinding aspect of it was a little bad. I didn't really like having to uh, just go through a dungeon and like fight random battles. I thought that was really awkward. But Fire Emblem Three Houses looks like it's really gonna just nail it in. It's gonna be great. Although I'll have to admit here, I think the thing that makes Fire Emblem Three Heroes stand out a lot is the fact that you're going to be a teacher of a school. Because modern day Fire Emblem is mostly a dating sim that is also a strategy simulator. If you thought people went crazy over Kawakami and Persona 5 and the fact that you could date them, imagine for a second that you are a teacher at a school and they make that into a dating sim thing where you can actually date the students. Holy crap. It is going to be really interesting to see how they deal with that. Now, I have a couple of theories. I think the most likely thing they're going to do, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong here in the future, but I think the most likely way they're going to approach this is they're going to make it so that the main character themselves doesn't get into a relationship. Like, you can still build your stats and, like, have friendship points with people, but I think... If they are going to put the relationship stuff in, it's going to be specifically geared towards the students only, and the main character's not going to have a relationship path. Uh, which I know for a lot of people is going to be really disappointing, but I just think that's the absolute easiest way to avoid controversy and stop people from arguing over this game, especially because the game looks so amazing on so many other points that I really don't want a controversy to bring this game's uh, reputation down. It's just not worth it, guys. So if they don't decide to go down that path and they do decide to have um, other types of dating where you can actually date other characters, 
uh, is probably going to be locked off from certain characters, or they're going to find a way to make the characters at the school you're at, like, of appropriate age. So it's going to be, like, sort of a college setting instead of, like, a high school setting. It's going to be, like, uh, once a character hits, like, 18 to 20, then they go to this school, and that's how they're going to get around it. Which, I mean, could also be, like, a thing. Or they could just go balls to the wall and just make it open to everybody. Just everybody dates everybody. <laughs> that's, that's how it goes. Now, maybe people will mature up a little bit and realize it's just a video game. And uh, they're not trying to say that it's okay for teachers to date students. And it's a video game. And everybody should not take it seriously. But asking America to handle a sexual and sensitive subject like this seriously... Uh, is sort of like asking for that wall back there to um, become my co-commentator and start commentating on these games with me. Honestly, it's just not going to happen. Um, everybody in America right now is looking for controversy. They're going to find it everywhere. And if they decide to do something like that where um, you as the teacher can date a student, the, the idea that this is just a video game is going to just blissfully go straight out of their head. They're going to look for a reason to complain about it, like they did with Kawakami. Um, it's just a video game, sure, but nobody else sees it that way, okay? We can kill people. We can steal from people, okay? In those cases, it's just a video game and it doesn't matter. Uh, but an unscrupulous relationship, oh, whoa, hold on, whoa, guys, okay. What happened to our moral sensibilities? Anyways, uh, that, sorry, that was a tangent and I apologize. That aside, uh, it does look really good. I'm excited for it. I do wholeheartedly believe it's going to be the best Fire Emblem game ever made. And we'll see what happens. That just Battle Royale. What a fun idea. I love that. It's so good. I haven't played it myself for <clears throat> obvious reasons. But, Tetris Battle Royale, man. Nintendo. Nintendo, you're... You're good people. I like you, Nintendo. All right, you're 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 my boys. That's a really cool and fun idea. I love the fact that they took that Battle Royale concept and gave it to something actually unique and actually refreshing. That's, that's super cool, man. If I get myself a good boy Switch that doesn't have hacks on it, I'm definitely going to get into that because that's, that's just good times right there, man. Dead by Daylight's coming to the Switch. Fine. Uh, it looks awful. Horrible. Uh, yeah, honestly, it's never, it's not like Dead by Daylight ever looked super good, but uh, it's not looking good on the Switch. It looks horrible on the Switch. It looks legitimately, okay, not even making any jokes here. It looks like a Wii game, like the original Wii. It looks like a launch game for the Wii. Don't even argue with me. That's exactly what it looks like, okay? Does anybody remember, uh, what, 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 what was it called? Um, Red Steel? Does anybody remember Red Steel? It looks exactly like Red Steel <laughs> as far as graphics go. And then the gameplay, yeah, it's fine, obviously, but honestly, you can get that kind of gameplay in a mobile game called Identity 5, which has way cuter graphics. Uh, it looks a lot more polished. You can play it on your phone. I really don't see a reason for Dead by Daylight to be here, but all right. Uh, if you're into that kind of gameplay, then it's probably going to be fine, but the community for it's going to die up really quick, so I wouldn't get too attached. That's all I'm saying. Deltarune's first episode is available for free. It's strange, but I haven't actually gotten into Deltarune yet. Uh, Undertale is a game that I love a lot. Um, I know it's a really uncool thing to say super nice things about a popular game like Undertale, but... Undertale was kind of awesome, okay? I, I legitimately do consider Undertale a masterpiece. And I know that, again, that's not a super cool opinion to have. Uh, you're not really allowed to contend, consider something like Undertale a masterpiece, because obviously it does have flaws. But I do love Undertale a lot. Have not even checked out Deltarune. Haven't even looked into it. I'll have to. But uh, if it's being released episodically, I don't know if this is just a Nintendo Switch thing. But if it's being released episodically, I think I would much rather wait for all the episodes to be out before I get into it, but we'll have to see. Next up, Demon X Machina. Yes, Demon X Machina looks pretty good too. Uh, Demon X Machina, man. They are actually bringing mechs back. I love mechs and I love mech combat. And we haven't really gotten a good mech combat game in a long time. 
Uh, this game reminds me a lot of Armored Core 4, and Armored Core 4 was a really good game too. So, you know, I love this whole Zone of the Enders style thing coming back, and uh, I'm really excited for it. Uh, it doesn't look that unique. Um, it's got Gundam Wing style anime characters piloting the max, that's fine. Uh, the setting is sort of like a dystopian Gundam Wing style world, that's fine. It's fine. Um, I'm just really excited to see mechs coming back. Hopefully this game's really good because I'd like to see mech combat start coming back as a genre. And, uh, yeah, I mean, let's just hope that, uh, it doesn't flop like every other <laughs> mech combat game that's come out in the last six years. Grid Autosport, Realistic Racing, Hard Pass, Hellblade Senua, probably gonna be a $60 game that's like... 20 cents on uh, game flip so I probably won't be picking it up but good more ports Mortal Kombat 11 more ports uh, I really don't see a reason to get Mortal Kombat 11 on the switch uh, it's probably not gonna run that good um, it's not Mortal Kombat is one of those fighting games that I couldn't see myself practicing on the go like for Blay Blue Cross Tag, I'll practice that on the go. If I want to play some Dragon Ball Fighters, I love having it on my Switch because I can just play a little bit of it on the go. Mortal Kombat 11 is not the kind of game that I would just sit down and practice on the go. And maybe that's just something with me, but that, that's a pass for me, dog. Sorry. Unravel 2. Don't we already have Box Boy, right? Box Boy and Box Girl? I don't even understand why we would even release information on Unravel 2 alongside Box Boy and Box Girl. Box Boy and Box Girl looks like it's going to be like the next co-op game to play. Um, Unravel 2 looks absolutely nothing like that. Uh, it looks like a game that's probably going to be like $20 and then they're going to have to release it down to about $5 before anybody actually picks it up and tries it out. Uh, kind of, kind of shovelware. Next. Assassin's Creed 3. Holy crap. <laughs> so, I know it's a bit of a meme that Nintendo just releases older generation games. But Assassin's Creed 3 is pretty low. Especially considering the Wii U had Assassin's Creed 4 on it. And, now on top of that, alright. So, on top of the fact that they are re-releasing Assassin's Creed 3 when we're up to, like, Assassin's Creed 18. On top of that, the game looks horrible. It's so laggy that I legitimately thought there was something wrong with my YouTube playback when I was watching the Direct. I went back and I switched the bitrate and I reloaded the video. But no, the game is actually that stuttery in gameplay. Now, I know somebody's gonna fire back with, oh, but the game's not done yet, it's still in development, we don't know. But that's really the footage we wanted to throw off. We, we really wanted to just hand that out to everybody. Here's our card, call us. It's It looks absolutely dreadful. I will not be picking it up, especially if it looks like it's going to be in that state. It was laggy. The frame rate was horrible. Let's see. What else can we talk about? There was popping, like texture popping, like the carts were popping out of nowhere. Uh, even, oh my god, even the Vita title that they're bundling in with it, Liberation, that game somehow ran even worse. Are you really telling me that this thing here cannot handle games that came out on this? Huh? Okay, I mean, alright. You guys do you. That's fine. Uh, I'm saving my money, but if you guys want it, go for it. Final Fantasy 7 VII and 9 are coming out on the Switch. Uh, <laughs> I mean, little does Nintendo know that we've been playing PS1 games on the Switch for like a year now, so... If anybody really wanted to play Final Fantasy VII or Final Fantasy IX on their Switch, they have, they've done it. They've got level 99 characters and all of the ultimate weapons by now. Uh, 
uh, I mean, this is the way you could do it legitimately, I guess. So, all right, fair. Okay, it, it's fine. Hopefully, they're not super expensive. Knowing Nintendo, they'll be at least $20, which is a ripoff, but whatever. Chocobo Mystery Dungeon. Um, Mystery Dungeon games are interesting to me. Uh, usually, I'll get really excited for them. I'll play them for like three or four hours, and then I'll completely drop them. I don't know why I can't get into a mystery game. Chocobo Mystery Dungeon might do it for me. Uh, we'll see. I wouldn't really hold my breath, but it could happen. You know, anything could happen. Astral Chain. Here's something that bothers me about the Nintendo community. All right. Every community has its problems. I understand that. I'm not saying that any community out there is perfect, especially when it comes to gaming communities. But something that legitimately destroys me about the Nintendo community is they are completely blind when it comes to new and original ideas that actually seem really good. Astral Chain is that idea. It looks amazing. The graphics are fantastic. Voice acting, okay, voice acting. But uh, the gameplay, the gameplay looks absolutely killer. You play as two characters at once. One is an actual human and the other one is like a robot thing. It's kind of like what Xenoblade Chronicles 2 should have been, but uh, it looks so good. It looks so fun. It's from the people who made Bayonetta, so we know it's gonna be awesome. Why isn't anybody talking about this game? Everybody's stuck on the Link's Awakening remake, which we will be talking about here in a second. But guys, Astral Chain, it looks really good. Uh, it might actually be the best looking game in this Nintendo Direct. Um, I don't even know why people said this Nintendo Direct sucked. This Nintendo Direct had a lot of really cool stuff. It's just, I think Nintendo fans legitimately like shut themselves off after the Smash update and then just waited for, uh, you know, something else that's Nintendo related. We complain about the fact that Nintendo only releases Mario, Zelda, and Kirby games, but when something actually new and unique and fun looking comes out, it doesn't get any traction. I wonder why Nintendo doesn't actually push anything besides Mario, Zelda, and Kirby. It's because people only care about Mario and Zelda and Kirby. Astral Chain looks phenomenal. Um, I really hope I'm not going to end up eating my words here when it actually comes out, but I do think Astral Chain is going to be an amazing game, and I hope it picks up a little bit of a fan base because uh, we could really use some new blood, and unfortunately Xenoblade Chronicles 2 didn't really scratch my, uh, my JRPG uh, anime, anime boys itch, so we'll have to see if Astral Chain can do it, but I really think it's going to. All right, and the big daddy of announcements, Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening was my very first Zelda game ever. Uh, I, I still, I still remember it. Oh my god. Original Game Boy sitting there, uh, in my mom's lap. She would play it, and I would watch her, and then I finally got old enough to play the game for myself, and here's how much of a loser I was as a kid. I could not get to the first dungeon. I couldn't figure it out. Uh, for anybody who hasn't played Link's Awakening, uh, let me explain just how pathetic this is. There's a Lost Woods area that you can go to right outside of town, and there's a raccoon you meet after you go across a few panels. And when you talk to him, he says, Oh, my nose is super sensitive, uh... I sure hope nobody uh, maybe equips the magic powder item and pushes the B button next to me and, uh, you know, activates the next cutscene. It was, it was, I'm retconning here a little bit, of course, but it was something along those lines. It was really obvious what you were supposed to do. Go get the magic powder, drop it on the raccoon's nose. Could not for the life of me figure it out as a kid. Now, despite this, I think I clocked roughly 800 hours into the game. <laughs> I don't know exactly how long I played it, but here's what I would do when I was a kid. I used to load up Link's Awakening, explore every single tile space, and then grind until I had 999 rupees, and then just explore. And that was the game for me. And honestly, I had a lot of fun. I, I don't even know what the big deal is. I thought it was great. But uh, I, I'm really... I'm really conflicted with the new Link's Awakening. 
because I would love to go back and experience that again, okay? And I'm probably going to end up picking this game up regardless of what I say here. Um, I still, I can hear the music playing in my head. I remember all the sound effects. Whew. I even remember the story after I got past the part that I got stuck at as a kid. I love this game to death. It's one of my favorites in the series. In fact, in my opinion, top-down Zelda is the true Zelda. As much as I love Breath of the Wild and Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess and all that, top-down Zelda is the way that I always see like as being the true Zelda experience. Um, so I'm looking forward to it, but let's get the big goofy looking elephant out of the room here. Um, I don't like the art style. Now, I'm not trying to say that the art style looks bad, because on a technical level, I actually think the art style looks really clean. It looks like they put a lot of effort into it. Um, they're not doing the art style just because it's an easy cash grab. I legitimately think... I keep saying legitimately. Is that weird? I do think that they put a lot of effort into making the game look as polished as possible. Just doesn't tickle my fancy. Um, I wish they had taken a little more serious of an approach. I understand kind of why they didn't, but even the Link Between Worlds Link looks a little bit better than this Link. Everybody's calling him a pop figure. I, I can't figure out why everybody thinks he's a pop figure. He looks much more like a me. Like, if somebody went and tried to make, like, a Link me, that's what he looks like? Uh, it's, it's whatever, man. Like, I, and I know somebody's going to come back with, Oh, Kudo, you don't get it, alright? Let me straighten you out, Kudo. Let me straighten you out. <clears throat> so this Link is sort of a callback to how he looked in the original game. Uh, uh... I know you didn't understand that already, Kudo, so I'll just, I'll, I'll just, I'll enlighten you a bit, okay? See, the eyes sort of represent how his eyes looked in the original Game Boy game, okay? And then, of course, the hands being blocky because, you know, they had blocky hands, blocky hands... So, I just, I hope you can appreciate the art style a little bit more, but I don't. That's the thing. Uh, you, you, you see, you see how we live in houses now, right? You see how the houses don't look like cave openings or like huts, right? That's because when we came up with a better design, we just started using that design because it was better. I don't care that it's a callback to the original. I'm just saying it doesn't look that good. Um, it could be whatever it wants to be. Uh, either it looks good or it doesn't look good. And to me, sorry to say it, boys, it doesn't look good. Now, that being said, I know another thing people are going to want to fire back with. And I know something that I've been seeing on forums and message boards and Facebook and everywhere is, well, if you don't like the way it looks, don't play it. If you don't like the art style, don't play it. No. I'm going to play it anyways. Uh, you can't stop me. I can complain about the art style and still play and enjoy the game. What? Where did we get in our heads that if we complain about something before it's released, it means we automatically hate that thing? Every game that's been released since the beginning of gaming itself has had problems. We've all had different tastes in games. We've all been able to play a game, even games that we love to death, like Ocarina of Time. I'm sure you, in your infinite Zelda wisdom, doesn't love everything about Zelda Ocarina of Time. I'm sure there's some part of it you don't like. Maybe it's the linearity. Maybe it's the fact that even though the game's open world, there are so many dead ends before you unlock certain things. Maybe it's because there's a lack of direction. Uh, there could be all these things. And nobody back then would say, Oh, if you don't like the lack of direction, don't play it. If you don't like the water temple, don't play it. We can have problems with these games, so still enjoy them. And that's what I'm going to do with Link's Awakening. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not buying it for $60. We're finding that on sale somewhere, and if we can't find it on sale somewhere, we're finding alternative ways to play it, but we are going to play it, and hopefully we are going to enjoy it.
So that's about it for this Nintendo Direct. I'm going to give uh, a real quick opinion on the new Pokemon game. Uh, the new Pokemon game looks really good. Um, everything looks really nice. The locale in particular, as far as just looks go, looks to be one of my favorite regions. I think I still prefer the Kalos region, just as far as aesthetics go, because I love the huge towers and the bustling city feel, but honestly, it just it looks really good. I really do enjoy the new Pokemon game's graphics. Something that bothers me, though, is I don't like the way the Pokemon themselves look. You get it? Like, something about the way the actual Pokemon looked in the game looked like they were ripped straight out of Pokemon X and Y. I mean, at the same time, I don't really know what I was expecting, but I definitely wasn't expecting that. Also, I hope they actually try and keep some of the innovations we got in Pokemon Let's Go, like riding on your Pokemon, or at least having Pokemon follow you around. So, hopefully that happens, but honestly, um, I'm really excited for it. I think the soccer thing looks a little bit weird. I don't know what they're going to do with soccer. I'm really not looking forward to playing soccer in my Pokemon game, but if we can play soccer with the Pokemon, that'll be cool. I don't know. Um, I think that looks interesting, but uh, let's talk about the starters. Score Bunny is very obviously the best starter. Don't you come to me telling me that Sobble is the best starter, because he's not. You're lying. People do not get into heaven if they lie. You know that, right? <sighs> I don't think Sobble is the best starter. Score Bunny is very clearly the best starter. And of course, I have to be dating the one person in the entire world who thinks Grookey is the best starter. Oh, Grookey? Orange-faced Grookey? Monkey with a stick in his hair Grookey? Oh, this is adorable. Score Bunny is the best starter. Hands down. Hands down. Hands down. But anyways, thank you so much for stopping by. I think that's about all I have in me today. I've been recording for a little over an hour. We'll actually see how this video turns out. Uh, knowing me, it's going to end up being more than an hour somehow because I ramble. But anyways, uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like or whatever. And, uh, yeah, I, hopefully I can get to doing videos like this more often. If you enjoyed this style of just sort of watching me react to stuff, um, just let me know, because I would like to do stuff like this a bit more often. But if not, I can just do a format where I actually just bring up Im images of the game as I talk about them, if that's something you prefer. But uh, just leave all of the thoughts in the comment section below along with what you would like me to talk about next, and I will see you guys next time. Sorry guys, was that weird? Was it weird that I didn't say subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Kudoku news?